I can't emphasize enough who's getting who's getting up to wash feet. Remember, don't look at Jesus as just another man. Like I said, he was man. He was 100% man. But he was son of God. Remember that. This is the son of God. This is Jesus. This is the one who left heaven. Beautiful, glorious heaven that we can't even comprehend what heaven's like. Came down here to us who we rejected. We spit it on him. We, we totally didn't want nothing to do with him. And he's coming to wash our feet. Remember that. To really get the impact of this teaching, you need to remember that. It's just not a man washing our feet. It's son of God. Verse 6. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, doest thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Up until Jesus got to Peter, no one was asking, What are you doing? Until he, until he got to Peter. He had already washed some other disciples' feet, and they didn't say anything. But when he got up to Peter, Peter asked, What are you doing? And I guess the other disciples uh, was just thinking, Well, he's just doing the tradition, because that's what they did. It's a traditional thing at the dinner table. Back then, that's what they did. But Jesus told them, What I do, you don't understand for now. That's what he told them. But you will later. And in verse 8, Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Now this is the second time Peter disagrees with what Jesus said. I'm telling Jesus. And this is the second time he's done that. Because in Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 23, it says, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples, how that he must go on to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Right there again, Peter saying, No, no. He's telling Jesus, No, that's not, I'm not going to let that happen. When Jesus is saying this is going to happen, this, this is Jesus, okay? Verse 23, But he turned and said unto Peter, Now this is what happens when you go against the Lord. But he, tur he, he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. He's calling Peter Satan. Even though he was not Satan. But what, did, what does Satan want? Satan wants things done his way. That's why God had to kick him out of heaven. Because he didn't want to follow the Lord. Now Peter right here is saying, no, no, I, Jesus is telling him what's going to happen, and Peter's going, no, you know, going against him. And God tells him, get thee behind me, Satan. So when we're disobeying God, if he tells us to do something, or he's, he's showing us, okay, this is going to happen, you're like, no, no, no. What are you being? Satan. Satan. You're being just like the devil. This was the first time. The first, the second time is right here on the washing of the feet. Y'all need to remember. I've taught on it before. Y'all need to remember. We need to remember this. God has said our ways is not his ways. We need to remember that. That's very, very important. We're little peons. We think we know stuff. We don't. We know absolutely nothing when it comes to God and his ways. All right? We need to remember that. Some of us think we're so smart and we can figure God out it ain't gonna happen our little peon brain there's no way we can stand up to the Lord so when things like when he says things like this or when things happen and we don't understand it I've taught it before our ways is not God's ways when he's doing something even though we don't understand it we just follow it amen, amen. then in verse 9 Simon Peter said unto him Lord not my feet only but also my hands and my head. Even though Peter missed the point referring to a physical washing, he wanted all of what Jesus was offering. It's like, well, Jesus, if you're doing this, then don't just wash my feet, wash all of me. Peter isn't looking spiritually at what's happening here. Now we're gonna get it because we're, the Lord has shown us through the scriptures what he's, what he's, what he's doing. But at, right at that time, Peter didn't recognize. He just looked at it as a feet washing. 
Okay? He didn't look with his spiritual eyes. Then Jesus started to show them what he was talking about in verse 10. Jesus said to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. What's he speaking about when he says, He that is washed. First John chapter 1, verses 7 and 9. This is what he's talking about. He that is washed. It says in 1 John 1, 7, 9, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. When we're walking with the Lord, then we have fellowship with him and others. That's what he's saying. But we need to be cleansed, which means washed. That's what cleanse means, right? We need to be washed. He washes us from our sin. In verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive, our, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we think we never sin, it says we're fooling ourselves and we don't know the Lord. But do you know that we can go days, like I said before, we can go days and weeks and even longer without sinning? I mean... Really, seriously, who in there, who in here, and don't raise hands or anything, but who in there, it's just a question, who in here thought, you know what, I can go days. In fact, I can go weeks without sinning. I'm not going to take it, I'm, yes, I'm a sinner, but that doesn't mean I'm going to sin every day. Who has thought that way? It's not that way. I mean, we are sinners and we are going to sin. But nowhere in the Bible does it say we're going to sin every day. We can, when you're walking with the Lord, you can go without sin. We're not going to be sinless. Like I said, even if you, you, if you, if you have a thought that's sin, you know, that's sinning. But we can go days or even weeks without sinning. You remember that. He says to be washed, you need, he says we need to be cleansed. Cleansed, that's what that means. Just because we know we're not perfect doesn't mean... We can just keep on sinning. That's what I'm saying. We know we're not perfect. Oh, well, I'm going to sin every day because I'm not there yet. Not until I go to be with the Lord. No, no, no. Why do you think the, Holy, the Lord gave us the Holy Spirit? To give us power. He's given us power to do things. And he's also given us the power to walk with him. And when we're walking with him, you're not. You can go. <laughs> I think somehow, some way, I needed to have a teaching just on that. Because really, I really believe that all Christians believe it's, a, it's okay, it's natural to sin every day because we're still sinners. No, no, no. We're children of God. And we've got the power of God inside of us. Mm -hmm. We are not going to be perfect, but we can go without sinning. Guess who's feeding you that lie? Yes, the devil. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us meaning wash, to wash us from all unrighteousness. So when he's back here, when he says, you're all washed, he's talking about, I have cleansed y'all. That's what he's talking about. Another place is in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 through 26. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. How do we get cleansed or washed? By the word. Amen? Amen. Read the Bible. Read the, You want to be clean? <laughs> Amen? You want to be clean? Read the Bible. Read the word of God. And don't just read it. Obey it. Amen? Amen. Then also in John 3, this is the same night when he washed their feet. It says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So the word of God cleanses us. It washes us. Psalms 119.9 Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse him, his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Verses after verse. It shows you want to be clean? Read the word of God and obey it. That's what being cleansed is. Reading the word of God and obeying it. The water is a physical washing, but the word of God is a spiritual washing. 
The water is just a water. But the Lord was talking about a spiritual washing here. Without the spiritual, the physical means nothing. I mean, if Jesus Jesus was just washing their feet, that don't mean anything. But he was showing he was showing it spiritually how y'all, y'all need we need to be washed. And I just showed you how do we get washed? These are Jews that they should have recognized Jesus. They should they should have recognized what he was doing because of the because of the Old Testament. Believe remember the Jews know the Old Testament, especially the first five books. I mean, they grew up learning that. All right, so they they should have recognized what he was doing, but again, they didn't. They weren't looking with their spiritual eyes. That's what we need to do. A lot of times we don't use our spiritual eyes. A lot of times. We look with these eyes, our physical eyes, that's how we look. And guess what? That's going to get you in trouble. That's going to get, look what it did to Peter. Jesus said, yeah, walk on the water. Peter started walking on the water, but then with his eyes, he started looking at what was, what was around him. And what happened? He started to sink. He took, his off, he took his eyes off Jesus, which was right in front of him, and started looking at the stuff around him. We need, we need to learn from that. We have spiritual eyes, and we need to learn to use them. They weren't doing that here. It shows how anything having to do with God had to be washed. Anything having to do with the Lord has to be washed. In Exodus 29, 4, it says, And Aaron and his sons thou shalt bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and shalt wash them with water. Shown, this is shown that Aaron and his son had to be washed all over before they can enter into the tabernacle. They had to be washed. Exodus 30, verses 17 through 21. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a bronze wash basin with a bronze stand. Place it between the tabernacle and the altar and fill it with water. Aaron and his sons will wash their hands and their and feet. They must wash with water whenever they go into the temple to appear before the Lord when they approach the altar to burn their special gifts to the Lord, or they will die. They must always wash their hands and feet, or they will die. This is a permanent law for Aaron and his descendants to be observed from generation to generation. In the Old Testament, they had to be washed. What's watch, what watches us now? The Word. The word. But back then, they had they pretty much had to follow the prophets. The prophets is what gave them the word. Moses had to bathe them all over, is what it says. You can't be a priest or any kind of minister until you're blameless. That's what it says. Blameless. That, that word does not mean sinless. In the tabernacle, there's two rooms in the tabernacle. These men could go into the first room but no further. Now they still had to wash, but they could go into the first room. But in the second room, only the high priest could go into the second room of the tabernacle. And that was only once a year. I'm just giving you a little history here. The high priest could go into the second room, but he had to be totally clean. Because he, when he would go in there, they would tie a rope or something on his ankle. Because if he wasn't totally clean, it says that he would die. That's how holy it is when you're, when you're dealing with God. That tabernacle was holy. And that second room, when the high, only the high priest, and this was only once a year, when he went in there, they tied a rope on his ankle because if he didn't come out, they knew he was dead. And they would have to pull him out. They couldn't go in there and get him. Because before Jesus, this was the Holy of Holies. This was a place where very sacred to God. He made it this way. But now we have Jesus. Now Jesus is the Holy of Holies. Amen. Like it says in 1 John 5.16 If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death I do not say that he shall pray for it. Now, the best way I know how to explain this is, is uh, for example Lot's wife. What did God tell them when they were leaving Solomon and Gomorrah? What did they said? Don't, he said, "Don't look back. 
What did his wife? What did wife, his wife do? And what happened to her? She turned into Saul. Because God said, don't look back. That doesn't mean she went to hell. She, but she did disobey. And she died. So there is a sin unto death. And this is what we're talking about. Another one is in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 29 and 30. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, we're talking about the Lord's Supper, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this call many are weak, and sickly among you, and many sleep. So this can kill you too. It's not a death unto hell. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are sins that would kill us. That, that could kill us. Let me put it that way. It says in the, in the Lord's Supper. That's why the preacher, our preacher does, and I'm, I'm, I hope others, but they'll tell you, hey, make sure you're right with God. If you're not, do not, do not take the Lord's Supper. When God says right here, do not, do not take the Lord's Supper if you are not right with Him. Because if you do, it plainly says, for this call, many are weak and sickly. And many sleep. So you could even die. You can even die if you're not right with God and you take the Lord's Supper. I'm just reading the scriptures to you, right? Yeah. When it comes to God, you better obey. What we should be seeing is that God has to, to wash us until we, until we go to be with Him. And He comes to get us. So we need to... This is not a one... Let me put it this way. This cleansing happens only once. When you give your heart to the Lord, you're cleansed. You're justified. God has found you to be right with Him. But He keeps cleaning us. Because what does what He say? He is the potter, we're the clay. So He keeps... And what do you use on water? I mean on clay to, to, to shape it? Water. So it's not, this is not just a one-time cleansing. When you get born again, that's one cleansing. You're washed with the blood of Jesus. But then there's a continual washing we've got to continue to go on. Because the Lord is still uh, transforming us to His image. To being like Him. In fact, Romans 9.21, it says, He is the potter, we are the clay. He still has to cleanse us because we're still sinners. And we need forgiveness. And we are being sanctified, which means we're still in the progress of becoming like Him. The end of verse 10, he says, Not all are clean. Of course, he's speaking about Judas. Because Judas was a what? A wolf. Wolves are not cleansed. Wolves are not washed. Yes, he did wash his feet. But that was a physical washing. The other ones, it was a spiritual washing. But with Judas, he did a physical water cleansing. Just a physical cleaning. He was giving Judas a chance he was giving Judas a chance to repent of what he was getting ready to do before he even did it. To change his mind. He gave him that opportunity and Judas didn't take it. He was so filled with the devil, he couldn't repent. What's happening here is what it says in Psalms 41.9. Yea, my own familiar friend whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. This is Old Testament, talking about New Testament. I said, this is a spiritual uh, washing. Verse 8 says, Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. So if the Lord don't cleanse us, we have no part of Jesus. Yeah. We're lost. We're still lost. So we need to be cleansed. Peter, like I said, Peter's talking about a physical washing when Jesus was talking about a spiritual one. And then in verse 12, So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? This is how we know that Jesus washed Judas' feet. Because he says here that he washed their feet. He didn't say, I just washed 11 of y'all. No, he said he, I washed, that he washed their feet. So they meant all of them. So he did wash Judas' feet. Now remember back in verse 7, Jesus says, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. The Lord wasn't, ta he wasn't talking about, okay, you're going to know months from now or years from now. 
because it said here, now you know what I've done. And if they still didn't understand, he plainly tells them in the next verse, verse 13, you call me master and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. This I am, that's very important in the Bible. They called him Lord with a capital L, which in the Bible, when you see spelt when you see it spelt with a capital L, it means Jesus. And I've told you before, when you see all capitals, capital L O R D, then it's talking about God. But if it's just a capital L, then it's talking about Jesus. And if it's a small L, then it's just talking about a, a, yeah, a king or someone like that. But when Jesus said, I am, right there, he's telling them right there who he was. Right there he's telling them. So they wouldn't have any doubts. Now these are Jews. They know the Old Testament. In Exodus 3.14, it says, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. So one of Jesus, one of God's name is I am. John 18, verses 4 through 6. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell on the ground. Why do you think these soldiers fell backward on the ground? Because when he said, I am, I am he, what are you saying? I am. And who's I am? God. Why do you think it says right there, and they fell to the ground? That's in verse, that's in John 8, 58. Well, no, that's in John 18, verse 6. But in John 8, 58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, Before Abraham was, This is Jesus speaking. Before Abraham was, I am. So right there again, Jesus is saying, I am God, come in the flesh. Amen? Amen. I mean, really, seriously. What did your whole witnesses do with all this? <laughs> what? Do they just leave all these verses? I mean... Uh, they have to leave out a lot of verses in order not to, to say that Jesus is not God. John 8:58. Jesus said on Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was. So Jesus was saying, I was here before Abraham. Before Abraham was, I am. Plainly. <laughs> Let me say something here. Back when they came to arrest Jesus, the high priest saw his men. He saw his men fall on the ground when Jesus said, I am. And the high priest saw Jesus when Peter cut the soldier's ear off. The religious leader saw the men fall on the ground when he said, I am. And then he seen Jesus heal the soldier's ear completely. Shouldn't they have just fell on their knees also saying, this is him. But even after doing that, after even, even after Jesus saying, I am, healed the man's ear, what did the leaders do? The, the religious leaders. They did not want, they didn't care who he was. The only thing they cared about was themselves. That's it. Religious leaders. Verse 14. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Was the example of washing feet? No wasn't washing feet because that was something they did day, daily was because you know they wore sandals and it was dry it was hot so they had a lot of dust so it was a daily thing to wash feet the example was that he took the form of a servant that's what Jesus was showing them that's why he told them if if I don't wash you then you have no part of me so he's showing them he's plainly showing them hey this is a spiritual washing that I'm showing you you have to be spiritually washed. Does your pastor or your priest, do they do that? Or do they put themselves on high? I see it all the time. I see preachers all the time, priests especially. They want to be looked up to. It really aggravates me. It upsets me. It gets me mad and I'm sad. Christians don't read. 
I mean, I'm talking about Christians. Now, I'm just not talking about lost people. I'm talking about Christians. Now, I believe there's Christians in the Catholic Church, but apparently they don't read. Because they would plainly see that preachers, priests, pastors, whatever you want to call them, they're to be our servants. We're not, the, we're not supposed to bow down to them and worship them like many of them expect. Are we too good to do the things what the Lord has done? Are we too good for that? Husbands, wives, are we too good to love our wives like Christ loved the church? Are we too good for that? I don't think so. Wives, are you too good to submit to your husband? I mean, is, what, what would be easier? To leave your place in heaven and come wash sinners' feet or just to submit to your husband? Seriously. I mean, here's Jesus and here's us. Here's a wife and here's a husband. So which one's a greater servant? I mean, if Jesus was in heaven and came down here and washed our feet, and then all the Lord is saying, husband, love your wife, we're on the same level. Okay, we're, we're, we're not having to come down from way up here to come love our wives, like the Lord says, or wives. You're not coming from way up here to submit to your husband because we're all the same. Do you do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Jesus, Son of God, came from heaven and washed our feet, became a servant. And some of our some husbands have a hard time loving their wives like Christ loved the church, and some wives have a hard time submitting to their husbands as unto the Lord. This is nothing compared to what God did, Jesus Christ. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. That ain't nothing. That should be a piece of cake compared to what, what Jesus did. This is what this teaching should be teaching us. We should be humble and servants. The, disciple, the teaching is the disciples didn't have any problem submitting to the Lord. They didn't have no problem submitting to the Lord. But to each other? Did they submit to each other? No. Hey, I, I, I'm going to be greater than you. Is that being a Christian? Luke 22, 24. And there was also a strife among them which of them should be counted the greatest. We're talking about the disciples. Verse 16. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Happy are ye if ye do what? Become servants. Happy are ye when you humble yourself. Whatever we do in the will of God, in the will of God, that should make us happy. When we do God's will, and this is what he's saying right here, when you're doing God's will, that should make you happy. Amen. When it pleases your Father, I mean, shouldn't that make us happy when we're pleasing our Father? Mm -hmm. Our Father, who's given us what? Life. 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 Remember, we were dead. He's given us life. So it should please us to please Him. It should make us happy to please our Lord. And what makes the Lord happy? Walking with Him. Praising Him. Colossians 1.10 That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. This is what makes Him happy. This is what pleases Him, is when you're growing. When you're growing in Him. Hebrews 13, 21. Make you perfect in every good work to do His will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in His sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. When you're in God's will, when we're walking with the Lord, that's what pleases the Lord. And when and His Word is showing us, so as when, when, his, and when His Word shows us we need to be servants, we need to humble ourselves, husbands, Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Love your wife. I don't care how she is. Love her. But she does this. But she's just, No, no. God said love her. Humble yourself and love that woman. No matter how she is. Unless she's totally away from the Lord. Okay? That's different. But if she's a wife that's just nagging. Or whatever. But she's a Christian woman. Love her. Humble yourself and love that woman. Even though you don't feel like it. Love her. Period. God said, love. Husbands, love your wife. That's a, that's a command. He didn't say, husbands, 
You can love her when she's whatever. He said, husbands, love your wife. That's a command. If we're not loving our wife like Christ loved the church, what are we doing? Sinner. We're sinning. And vice versa. Wives, if you're not submitting to us as unto the Lord, he just same thing. He says, wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord. It, he wasn't asking you to. He's telling you, wives, submit yourself to your husbands, period. Do you see where I'm going? Humble. We need to humble ourselves. We're not up here. Well, my wife, she's... Mm -mm. The same thing, vice versa. That's, that's what the Lord is trying to show us. He's trying to show us. We need to be humble. We're, we're children of God, yes. And that, that makes us great in His eyes. Because we've, we've accepted Him. But we're still little peons. We still shouldn't think, oh, well, I'm better than that person. Even, even if the person is lost and doesn't have the Lord, we should not, we should not look down at that person. Because what does, what does the Lord say? He says, love your enemies. Who's our enemies? Lost, lost people. He tells us to love them. Do you all hear me? Mm -hmm. Romans 8.8. 8. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And how do you, how do you get in the flesh? By disobeying the Word of God, the Bible. That's how you get in the flesh. So if you're disobeying the Word of God, you're, you're being in the flesh, and this does not please God. Hebrews 11.6 But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So if we, if we have faith in the Word of God, the Word of God, if we have faith in what He says here, and we obey Him, we obey all His commands, then we can please Him. But if we don't have faith in Him, how can we please Him? Amen. So this, this teaching was to teach us, hey, even though we're children of God, we are children of God, amen. Mm -hmm. But we're still nobodies. We should be humble. We should have no pride. No pride. We should humble ourselves and be servants and always looking to help others. Because we're, we're, we don't put ourselves on the pedestal like a lot of preachers do. A lot of preachers, or should I say priests, because it's both priests and preachers. They put themselves on pedestals like they're somebody. They're not. If Jesus didn't put himself on the pedestal while he was here on earth, and he, he made himself a servant to us, you think these preachers and the priests ought to be putting themselves on a pedestal? No, I don't think so. Want to walk with the Lord? Be, a, be humble. Be a servant. Amen. So now we see why he washed their feet. He wasn't washing their feet for physical. He was washing their feet to show them spiritually. Hey, you need to be washed. You need to be cleansed by me. Or you don't have no part of me. So when we're witnessing the people, this is, this is, this is some verses we can use. We can use these verses as, as, a, as being witnesses. You know, the Lord shows us in these verses right here that He needs to cleanse us. He needs to cleanse us if we want to have Him, if we want to be with Him. Because if we don't let Him cleanse us, wash us from our sins, then God says, you have no part of me. You can use these verses right here to witness to people, to show them they need to be washed. They need to be cleansed. Or they have no part of God. Amen. Amen. I love teaching. I love preaching too. 